General Feedback, Inches X Algebra, Part 1. Actually, this first slide I got here, this could be for any assignment. Notice something lacking <laughs> with this person turning this in. I have no answers anywhere. I almost want to say this is worse than not turning the assignment in. If you turn it in and pages are blank, you wasted your time turning it in. This guy, slightly better. Triple question mark. Okay, that is the universal symbol for Mr. Thomas, I need help. Ask the question. I have Q&A time almost every day. Instead of turning in the assignment with a triple question mark, turn it in a day late. Ask the question. Mr., can you help with this problem? I would be able to I would be able to talk it through. I've actually talked through this specific problem with several individuals during Q&A time. So if you're dipping out during Q&A time to uh, play video games or take a nap, sometimes you might want to tune in because somebody else will ask the question that you, for whatever reason, don't want to ask. This guy here. This is a beautiful measurement, if I add on the units, inches. It is true that that's the answer for the question mark. And I can infer, probably, you used a legitimate process to get that answer, but I don't see the process anywhere. And process, showing your thinking, is where I lock up most of my points. I'm not actually too cool with an answer that looks like this. It is technically correct. You have the question mark. Just adding in, I took the longer board and I subtracted the smaller board from it. That gives me my, my gap. Just adding that little bit in moves this score upward. Same idea here. We've got a number. Okay. This number is clearly not correct because if if that if three bricks is six more than six inches then six bricks is going to be more than 12 inches and 12 is already bigger than 10 so there's two things that I want with uh, this situation number one this person also didn't show me any processes so it's possible that they're doing completely legitimate, thinking and they made a simple calculation error but I will never know that the other thing that I always want you doing is asking the question is my answer reasonable is my answer reasonable now truth be told every once in a while I will hit you with a problem where the answer is ridiculous we had a problem where I was talking about sibling heights and partway through doing the problem, I started laughing and I said, I guess these kids are giants because they're both like seven feet tall. But most of the time when I give you a scenario like this, there's going to be some reasonableness to the answer. If the fact that I can just look here and say, let me double this amount. All right, I'm still I'm estimating, but here to here is 12. Something's wrong with my 10. And I want you to be able to point that out to yourself and then even if you can't figure out all right I don't know what I did wrong if you show your process and again ask the question in, he in class mister this is what I did I know something's wrong can you see if you can find my error uh, that will help me to help you all right this right here see this is this right here is beautiful right I can probably guess that they came up with 51 point four three seven five because they added these two numbers together and that's not what we want to do we don't want to add them together but uh, I will give them some credit for for the work that they're showing and actually if I ignore the situation and start with their equation they are solving the equation that they wrote properly so this shows me I know something I know how to solve a one-step equation, which is one of the skills that we were looking at.
So this is worth something even though they went the wrong direction. But again, this person, I would be asking the question, is it reasonable? Did I, is my answer reasonable? Is it reasonable that this little blue section measures 51 inches when the entire board here only measures 27? I would say no. That's, that's an unreasonable answer, and I should be coming into class and saying, here, Mr. Thomas, this is what I did. Where am I going wrong? Okay? And I, and I could actually, you know, I could talk through this, right? Yes, this, there's a subtraction taking place here, right? It's legit that there's a subtraction taking place there. And if the, the one thing that is lacking is the order, right? If I take the longer board and I subtract the question mark from it, I should get the shorter board. So that's one little change. Switch the order of my terms in the subtraction problem and all of a sudden oh all right now how do I solve this algebraically subtract 27 and 13 sixteenths from both sides I'll get a negative number but this is also a minus question mark so flip the sign on both sides multiply by negative one on both sides question mark equals four point something right which is a much more reasonable answer okay but again this guy is getting more points than the last two guys that did not show any work. Okay, same kind of thing, same kind of thing. I just, I want this idea burned into your mind. Is my answer reasonable? This could be a more important question than how do I solve the problem? When I do solve the problem, is my answer reasonable? Does it make sense that the center section of this fence is 300 inches if the entire fence is only 200 inches? Right? That's not reasonable. It's not a reasonable answer. Okay. Now, actually, though, again, they showed some steps. If this was actually the equation, add the question mark to the 234, get the little piece. If that was actually the equation, this would not be the steps we use to solve it. So what this actually shows for me, and again, it's helpful, is this student has several things that I need to work out with them. Number one, they're struggling to solve a one-step equation. Right, because technically, what I should be doing if this was really the one step equation is subtracting the 234 from both sides, not adding it. I can't get rid of addition by adding unless I flip a sign. So, if they had if they had been cool with that and they get a negative answer, then blaring sirens in this situation ah uh, something must have gone wrong now i need to ask mr thomas something okay also and again this is this is something where i'm a part of me says i i'm still able to give you some points because one of the one of the requirements one of the things that we're looking at is can i write an algebraic equation which this is an algebraic equation it doesn't happen to match the situation the situation itself would be more like, let me add my 67 plus my question mark. And then also, this was the trick part on this one. Let me add another 67 on the other side because I got another piece of fence here. And each of those three parts should add up to the total, 234 and 3 eighths. So, and then going from there to figure out what the, what the question mark is. But long story short, I want you asking, is your answer reasonable? And I want you to ask questions in class if you realize that your answer is not reasonable. This guy here, you're doing this, <laughs> plus two. This is a true numerical expression. Six and three-fourths plus two is eight and three-fourths, okay? 
do I give you a do I give you a smidgen of points because you wrote a numerical expression and it's true? Uh, sure, why not? But where did two come from? This is going to be a question that I ask you if you bring numbers in and don't explain where they came from. Now it's possible. I don't know. I I mean I, I'm left to guess. You didn't tell me where you got it from. Is it is it possible that they misread the question mark as a two and also thought that I was just asking them to add two lengths together. I don't know. I don't know what this person's thinking. But I do want this from all of you. If you introduce a number to the to the problem situation and it's not immediately clear where it comes from, you need to explain why you're introducing that number. So I had some people do stuff like this with this one and this is this is inexact. They said all right, this height is about the same as that one. And if I go up to here, that's about the same. This this height may be about the same again. So I'm going to say, now I think each of those pink pieces is a little bigger than that yellow piece. But some people did it like this, and they're like, okay, about four yellow pieces equals one green piece. Ha, Greenpeace. That's a uh, organization. Spell piece a little differently. Anyway, about four yellow pieces equals one green piece. And then they did something like this. Four times six and three-fourths equals and get an answer. Now, typing this out or, or scribbling this out, writing this out, or even just even just drawing the picture of the four segments shows me where the four comes from for the people that did that okay this guy though i got no idea where the two comes from that's always going to be a problem if you just introduce a random number into your situation nine times out of ten you're going to get the answer wrong but also it's it's not it's not real mathematical thinking to just throw random pieces together math is supposed to make sense and i know a lot of times you guys are like this makes no sense at all to me but it's supposed to make sense you're supposed to try to make sense out of it. So that means no bringing in random numbers. If you do bring a number into the problem situation, make it clear why. There needs to be a why. Uh, if you're ever working in Google Slides, I've had a couple people do this. Don't put information outside of the slide area. I, I, will, I will not... Oh, wait. The slide goes all the way over here. I will not a lot of times... If I have if I have full screen, like I'm looking at a slide full screen, I won't even see that stuff. So there's people that you know, on some assignments, I would type to them, you left it blank. And they'd be like, no, my stuff is there. It's on the side. And when I look later, yes, it's on the side. But try not to do that. Try to put all your, all your answers within the slide region. All right, that's what I'm going to say with that. Uh, other than that, these people, this, this isn't too bad. They have a they have a similar issue to somebody before. These subtract subtracted terms should actually get reversed. They also didn't really describe. Maybe they described it over here. <laughs> maybe maybe I just can't see it. They didn't really describe where 134 comes from. I know where it comes from. What they're doing is two times 67. But to complete the answer, it'd be nice to either put that there, say two times 67 because of this piece or somehow show it right even if you're doing it as a step two times 67 is 134 and then doing your uh, 234 minus 134 equals my question mark